If we accept that knowledge claims about the world are less than certain, and we need to look to evidence and explanation in order to justify those knowledge claims, this raises the question, what counts as good justification? In other words, what is needed for that justification to be sufficient in order to regard that knowledge claim as truth? As I will try and explain in this video, the issue of justification can be a very thorny one, and it often hinges on the difference between causation and correlation. In the image, you can see the cat's location is correlated to the broken roof. However, I would be very reluctant to try and claim that the cat is the cause of that roof breaking. The issues regarding justification and whether we are able to know that one thing or an event is a cause of another or merely correlates to it is increased when dealing with complex systems, such as physiological systems of organisms, environmental systems, and those that exist in human societies. The controversy regarding New York City's dramatic turnaround in the 1990s after almost two decades of high crime rates really illustrates this point. In the 1970s and 80s, New York City experienced very high crime rates, especially violent crime such as murder, robbery and assaults. Crime was also linked to increased drug use, gangs and a lack of employment. Yet, in 1991, crime plummets to unseen low levels, and the sudden drop surprised many. Therefore, the question is, why did crime rates fall so quickly and dramatically in the early 1990s? One explanation for New York's drop in crime is due to a combination of factors relating to law and order and the success of these policies. For example, stop and search, militarized policing, as well as increased jail terms. However, another explanation favored by social economists links the fall in crime in New York City to the legalizing of abortion in 1973. This resulted in a sharp drop of unwanted births, which eventually meant by the 1990s, there were far less people turning to crime. The question is then, which is the best explanation for the fall in crime in New York City? In other words, which of those theories is causally linked to that drop in crime and which merely correlates? One way to think about this issue is the Gettier problem, which really strikes at the justification element of Plato's tripartite theory of knowledge. To explain, I'll refer to a famous example detailed here on the screen. I see a friend in a wedding dress with her family outside a church. I believe she's just got married without telling me, and this belief is justified by the scene in front of me. It is true that my friend has just got married, but that was the week previous, and the scene in front of me is that of a film of which she has taken part in. In short, what Gettier is focusing on is the relationship of the justification to the truth of the belief. My justification is the scene in front of me, and the belief is true, my friend has just got married. However, that relationship is pure luck, and it is very questionable whether luck is a reliable method of producing knowledge. It's important to note that not all philosophers accept Gettier's critique. However, I do think it's a very interesting argument, and it really highlights for us, especially in theory of knowledge, two very important points. First, any knowledge claim of the world around us is less than certain. And this problem, especially in terms of justification, is exacerbated when dealing with complex systems. The second benefit of the Gettier problem is it points us to a clearer understanding of both different theories of knowledge within which justification operates, and secondly, what really are valid forms of justification. Clarity here is crucial in order to assess how we can know anything at all. Just to add a little bit more detail with regard to the theories of knowledge topic forming one of the videos later in this series, reliabilism can be a particularly attractive theory. And reliabilism simply states that a method for producing knowledge 
is good and justified simply because it has been reliable in the past. However, once we apply this notion of reliability to a real life example, we soon run into difficulties. Going back to the New York City example and the fall in crime rates, both explanations appear to be very reliable. They're supported by good evidence, the opinions of experts, and benefit from a valid and reasonable explanation. Yet we still may ask, which is the better theory? It's worth pointing out here other important factors that constitute valid justification. The quantity and quality of evidence available, the ability for the theory to explain and predict the behavior of the phenomena, and a judgment based on the reasonableness and probability that any knowledge claim is in fact true. In conclusion, the key points to take away from this film are one, justified beliefs in themselves are not sufficient for knowledge since we can doubt the validity of any justification. Two, issues regarding justification are exacerbated in complex systems where it is more difficult to discern what is a cause from a mere correlation. And thirdly, it's prudent to maintain an open mind and healthy skepticism when dealing with competing theories, whilst at the same time focusing judgment towards the quality of evidence available and explanation used to justify any knowledge claim.